You know, prostaglandin have been involved in the pathophysiology of pulmonary arterial hypertension, specifically prostacyclin or prostaglandin I2. It's a very potent vasodilator. It also is what we call an anti-proliferative agent where it keeps the cells that line the pulmonary arterioles and the cells in the walls of the pulmonary arterioles under control so that they don't act in a way that narrows the lumen and increases pulmonary vascular resistance. The first drug actually approved for pulmonary arterial hypertension was an infusion prostacyclin called epiprostanol. And that's really the only agent in whom we have confirmed survival advantage because there was no other treatment to compare it to when the original study was done. Subsequent therapies don't have that advantage because it wasn't ethical to have a placebo-controlled arm. Even in today's expert guidelines for patients with severe class 4 disease, moving to infusion prostanoids, which include epiprostanol and triprostanol, are the recommended treatment intervention. For patients with less severe disease, there's an option to use other therapies. And over time, the ability to deliver the prostanoids, the prostacyclin medications, has evolved from infusion to now inhaled options and now oral preparations. So in that one category of medications that target the prostaglandin pathway, we have oral, inhaled, and infusion options. So it's getting very complex in terms of the decision making about which of these to choose and which patient. And the science just isn't there quite yet to make firm recommendations. One should appreciate, however, that if you are on infusion therapy, that clearly is the one that has the documented improvement in survival. So using it in class four disease is very appropriate. Second, you have zero order kinetics. So there's a constant level in the bloodstream and therefore treatment effect on the pulmonary circulation. As opposed to if you're delivering it by inhaled or oral, where you have peaks and valleys of the medication and may not have coverage during nighttime, for example, depending on which of these you choose. So it's unknown as to whether inhaled and oral would ultimately be equivalent to an infusion prostanoid. There's no information that says yes or no. I think the majority of the pulmonary arterial hypertension experts at this point would err on the side of the infusion therapy in a severe patient and use inhaled or oral in a more moderately ill patient, perhaps in combination with the other classes of medications. So infusion prostanoids are delivered by one of two routes. One option is to have an indwelling central venous catheter, so it's delivered intravenously, connected obviously to an infusion pump where the drug is prepared and installed in the pump and run at a certain dosing rate. A second option is subcutaneous infusion. That applies to triprostanol, and the drug is 100% bioavailable when infused subcutaneously. Again, connected to a line and an infusion pump with a dose that's prepared and run at a particular dosing rate. The intravenous route has, of course, the indwelling line, which runs some infection rate, albeit low, and if the line gets infected, obviously the chances of it progressing to a bacteremia or a systemic infection is a very real situation that needs to be monitored by the patient and the clinician because that can be life-threatening if not detected early and treated appropriately. The subcutaneous infusion does not have the risk of what we call line-related bacteremia or line-related sepsis that the intravenous infusion does but it does create a fair amount in the way of inflammation and pain at the infusion site. There's particular and specific ways of managing that, but every patient who delivers the drug subcutaneously will have something in the way of a side effect 
at the infusion site, even if it's just a modest amount of redness or swelling, but that can range all the way to serious pain or even an abscess underneath the skin. So there's specific complications of these infusion medications that probably warrant, in almost all cases, the patient to be managed in an accredited pulmonary hypertension center where you have expert clinicians and more importantly, coordinators who are available on the phone to be able to respond to the patient when they call and if they have an indwelling catheter and they're having a fever, to direct them to the physician's office for evaluation or if they're infusing it subcutaneously and they're having inflammation or signs of infections that require early evaluation or intervention, that that's done by an expert who has experience in managing these problems rather than in a general medical setting. Lastly, the infusion prostanoids really do not have a ceiling on dose. So if the patient isn't doing as well as anticipated, you can increase the infusion level of the medication really without a whole lot of concern about having some maximum dose beyond which you cannot prescribe the medication, with some rare exceptions. The inhaled preparations of prostanoids, of course, have ceilings on the maximum amount of drug you can deliver, which is limited by the preparation of the drug and the delivery system.